So that's enough charting and finance. Let's do something different. Um, yeah, how do I was you take? Comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I know all that. <laughs> okay. So how do we get, how do we get paid? So we're a regular business. It's a web app, and we want to make money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I've been waiting for this for nine <laughs> weeks. <laughs> money, money, money. Okay. So let it rain. Let it rain. Um, you, you probably are not going to accept cash on a website because nobody's going to mail you money. Uh, so you probably want to take a credit card, right? And so there are very, there are many services which can give you the ability to take credit cards. This is one of them called Stripe. There's others. Uh, I think one's called Braintree. There's a few others. Um, but Stripe is easy to use from a developer's perspective. And that's nice for us. It's also easy to use for customers. They're not going to know the difference. Okay, it'll be behaving the same for them. Um, but we'll use it just because it's easy for us to use. Uh, there's also PayPal. PayPal works uh, similar, and most people use a credit card in PayPal. But you can you can also accept other forms of payment. The point is by offloading that responsibility to a third party. Who cares how they got the money? You get the money to yourself, and that's all you care about. Right? They're acting as this middleman who is responsible for connecting the two people together. And so, um, in theory, you could connect directly to Visa and cook up something, but it's just not worth it. Uh, it's easier just to use one of these third parties to do it for you. Be I mean, there's two reasons. One is that's probably going to be hard, but the other is that there is a ton of compliance that's necessary if you take credit cards, okay? About how you store that data and all that stuff. And there's regulations and you know, thousands of pages that you have to read to understand. By all, you know, by you know, giving this responsibility to Stripe, they can do all that messy work, and all you, you just have to use them. Okay. Uh, so the nice thing about a system like this is we never actually store the credit card in our database. Okay. We store the customer, like their email or whatever, and we have some record in Stripe's system for that customer. But we never actually store their credit card. We don't know what it is. We don't. We don't have to store their address or anything like that. Okay. In other words, this form they're showing you. This is something we store in our system. These are things stored in Stripe. Okay. But anyway, the process is web we'll form. Go enter the credit card information. That'll send some data to Stripe. Stripe will give us back a token, and we can use that token to charge our. So for us, what we see is, we don't see credit card one, two, three, four, we see token one, two, three, four. We say, hey, Stripe, charge this token this amount. And on their side, they're connecting that to a credit card. Okay. So for us, it's really easy. Uh, we, don't have to, we don't have to worry about all the compliance. Um, OK, uh, so how does Stripe make money? Does anybody know? Merchant fees. Merchant, yeah, they charge a fee on every transaction. And Visa, of course, also charges a fee on every transaction. Something like three percent, two point nine or something. Uh, but they detail that all here. It's relatively inexpensive. Uh, I mean, basically they're charging thirty cents, and the credit card company's charging whatever. <clears throat> and that's just the way it is. Uh, there is an alternative, which maybe we'll talk about afterwards. Uh, but this is kind of how it is. Uh, you can't really avoid this. If you want to take a credit card, it's uh, it's expensive. Um, I mean, it's a percentage of what you make, so you're always making money on the transaction. But it's just an overhead cost, okay? Uh, so there's no like fee just to sign up. There's only a fee on each transaction. That's how they make money. There's no like, oh, I have to pay Stripe ten dollars a month or something. It's just the transaction fees. Um, any question about that? So do they handle the merchant side as well? <coughs> Uh, no. So the way it works is we set up, uh, we'll have a form that'll say, you know, buy this product, it's $10. Um, and we send some information to Stripe, and they send back the token. So we're responsible for defining what it is the customer's purchasing. Uh, most web apps, um, you're not selling a physical thing. We are selling some service, right? So you're not actually going to have to mail them anything. <laughs> no, I was right. saying like the merchant side, the back end side where the money actually gets processed into the bank. 
Yes, they do do that. Oh, okay. They'll work with the visa and all that. Okay. Uh, and so, yeah, you'll have an account on here, and they'll they'll take your tax information and they'll tell you everything you need to put in there to make sure that it's all, you know, and you'll put your hook up your bank account. So they are handling all that part for you. Sorry. That's me. good. No, it's good. Like I said, it's pretty easy. So I think actually, if you guys want to follow along here, I think we can sign up. And we can sign up without having to like enter anything. Um, apparently, I'm already signed up. So if you guys go to Stripe.com and sign up, I think there's an option to, uh, to sign up without entering any information. Sign up without an email or whatever. Uh, and you can do that. Uh, and then maybe we can all get this example to work. Um, Is it worth bigger to later and skip this step? That's it. Skip the sign up. Which is really cool that they give you that. And they really want you to try it, you know. They figure once you try it, you'll be hooked. And, <laughs> and that, that first, uh, oh, I have to find email, I get it. You know, like, it's nice that you don't have to do that. Okay. Uh, and so this is what it looks like. It has this live and test. And so this is, we can make a, we can charge, but to fake credit cards. For testing, right? That's the idea. Uh, and then once we feel like we have the process down, it's good to go, then we will charge for real credit cards. We're not going to charge for real credit cards, but we could. Uh, Send that one on some through to our I want to tip, create a teacher tip site. I once had to do this and my credit card got to die. <laughs> they were like, you've done this too many times. Because I would do it and then charge back and then do it and then charge back. And, so does this alleviate the need for an HTTPS on your site? No, you should still have you an HTTPS. Have. Anytime you have a login, uh, you should have an HTTPS. Uh, but no, we are not storing any of the credit card info, so uh, we have that at least. Uh, and, and so there's sort of the two types of payments. There's like a one-time payment, and then there's an uh, ongoing, a monthly fee. You know, like you sign up for uh, Spotify or something, and there's some $10 a month charge. Or and so they talk about that here, and you can see all the payments and all that stuff. Uh, what we're interested in is the documentation. So Stripe has really good documentation. And what makes it good is it's documentation for developers. So they have tons of examples, and they tell you how to do it all. So let's see if we can find that here. So somebody wrote an introduction. So, as I look at this getting started website, do we have to set it up for your website and then set it up for your mobile app, or does it coincide as you develop one, it will automatically kind of also work in the other environment? Mobile is complicated okay. uh, because applications on the Apple store, you have to use Apple payments or your application will be denied because Apple would like to take a cut of your money, too. So. Okay. I just uh, noticed that a lot of the sites like this offer both on your website and in your mobile app. And I'm just wondering, you know, do you have to do that for all these kinds of things? Because I guess you do, because of the yep. complexity. You'll have two separate payment flows, one for mobile, one for your regular. That's, that's cool when you're buying things. It gets super complicated when you deal with subscriptions. But isn't that native versus web app? So if I have a yep. web app and I'm deploying it that is mobile responsive, it's the Apple is not going to take a percentage in that case. It's only no. when I have a native. An installed application. Right. If they're just browsing in the browser, that's fine. Right. And you can use the it's, same flow. Stripe does have some alternate libraries for mobile too. Yeah. So on Android, you're a little more flexible. Um, right. But anyway, it gets complicated. We're not talking about mobile, so we're not going <laughs> to go down that rabbit hole. No, um, touch on it. It's good you mentioned that. I mean, just so we know that it is more complicated. I, I think, I mean, they actually have an iOS thing. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm looking at it. And I think the distinction is, you know, if you write an app to sell t-shirts, yeah, you can charge a stripe. If you write an app, to sell Spotify, if you're selling it on iOS, you have to go through iOS, they take their 30%. Mm -hmm. Oh, one time versus recurrence? Is that what you're saying? 
something like physical that. versus for, oh, physical, physical versus, versus subscription to software or payment <coughs> for software features. Okay, so if you go to stripe.com slash docs slash libraries down here, API libraries, there is a Go library. Mm -hmm. So Stripe has support for just about every platform, and they have a Go library. Right. So let's run this go get github.com slash stripe slash stripe dash go. Did you get that uh, API page? Stripe.com slash docs. Yeah, I got the docs. Slash library. Down slash, uh, library. API libraries down there. So I'm running go get, cool, you got it, okay. So did everybody do that? Go get github.com slash stripe slash stripe dot dash go. I'm going to go look at the Go API docs and see this is what I'm talking about. It's really nice documentation. Uh, there's a ton of information here. Um, I think they have a, there's a walkthrough on their website, so I'll leave that open. Reopen this. getting started on your website. Okay, so everybody see this getting started embedded form? So we have both uh, this open, this is the Go API, uh, and then this open. Okay, so think of this as like the walkthrough, this is the tutorial, and this is like the technical reference. Okay, so we use them in tandem. Uh, in particular, there's going to be one step, because we want to do this on App Engine, that'll be a little different, uh, but otherwise it should be very similar. Okay. Um, so this is a this is a test credit card number four two 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 four two, and that's it. Uh, if you don't know, actually, credit card numbers have a code in, with, embedded within them, and so not all uh, numbers are valid credit card numbers. Anyway, this one passes the test the, the internal validation of a credit card, but it's not a real credit card, number. Uh, and so you can use that as a test. And they have a bunch of others, um, and so that's when we'll, when we're writing these forms and we're entering information. Don't enter your actual credit card, enter one of these fake ones, okay? Uh, okay? Okay, so what we have to add is this. Um, so we can just put this form on a page. So let's make an app. Let's build our own, our own app here. So in here, in day, week four, day two, let's call this Stripe example. And then we'll have an app YAML. And let's just copy that from this other one. So, everybody have that? So, day two, Stripe example, app YAML, with whatever you want to put in there. Um, and then we will create a route seco. And let's call this package Stripe example. Uh, what do we want to sell? Sell something. Sell more stuff, prepare stuff. Well, let's start with the one time, because I think one time is easier. Let's sell cookies. Cookies? Yeah, let's sell cookies. That's a good idea. Should we sell a box of cookies? 12 cookies? The cookie jar. We'll sell the cookie jar. Let's sell the jar of cookies. Okay, so we'll do HTTP.handle. Fine. And we'll pass off slash. We could extend the Bernie Madoff example and sell investments. <laughs> uh, Guaranteed to have a high rate of return. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we can do that. Um, so I guess we're selling our services or something. Uh, okay, okay, so we'll have handle index. Time, let's, let's do templates because I think we're going to need because we have a lot more HTML this time. So make a new folder templates and 
inside that folder create, which is called index. extension? Well, so the extension's up to us. Go doesn't actually care. Um, I do Go HTML because the Go Plus package understands that this is HTML in the Go template context, and so it knows something about the using the curly braces. So if I do, it can, it'll format it a little better, but otherwise it doesn't matter. Because it's mostly HTML, so. Um, so what are we selling? Our financial services. Guaranteed investment. investments. Okay. Are your cookies full of <laughs> You get a free box of cookies when you invest a billion dollars over this. Um, okay, so, you know, we'll have an H1, and then we'll say, you know, invest with us and get a free. Give some nice. Box of cookies. And then we're going to have a form where they can invest with us. So if we go back to the example, we'll copy this embed checkout thing. Okay. Kind of interesting way they've done this. In a form, the action is the empty string. So a little slash. Script, so where's this is point this off of Stripe. Notice this bit is important. Remember I said it. You probably have to be on HTTPS, okay? In our case, we get a little, hey, this isn't secure. We'll just say, okay, whatever. Um, but if you don't want your customers to get that, you need to serve your site on HTTPS. Which, remember, is really complicated, and you have to pay Google $40 a month to do it, or use the platform. Um, again, we have a class Stripe button. Uh, this key is different, okay? Um, so the key here is what's going to be inside of your dashboard. So if I go to stripe.com and then dashboard, in here you'll find your keys. Thing I'm not showing you a real live Stripe account right now because that would have been here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is a test slide. I haven't entered any new information. So even if somebody went in here, what's my name? I haven't entered my name. I haven't entered my bank. There's nothing to do. Uh, okay. So um, we have these test keys and live keys. Uh, and so we want to use these keys. So the idea here is this is the key that customers are allowed to see, and this is the key that's inside your source code that you're not supposed to see. So this is the key that would be like in the JavaScript, and this is the key that would be on the Go side. It's actually, it inserts it into that JavaScript, so it's already correct. Oh, uh, interesting. If you copy, if you were logged into the yeah, Stripe. Well, go to your source, and mine matches, so yours presumably matches too. Hmm. OK. But does it make sense what I'm saying? There's this relationship between the two keys. Right. And this is this JavaScript key here. This is the JavaScript one. And this is the one we use on the Go side. So when we communicate with the server, we're using the secret key. Okay. And with clients, from the other different browsers are communicating with Stripe, they're using this key. So do all your admins who have access to the code see your secret key? Yeah. This is secret as in the sense that secret within my organization, not necessarily secret. This means your, your clients don't know. Okay. Otherwise, they can interact with the Stripe API on behalf of you. And they can see all your charges and stuff, and they do that. So, this is keep this within your organization. This you can release to the public. The public. Where'd you go to get that? I went to up to here, this your account, and then settings and then API keys. 
But I think Rusty's right that their docs were so yeah, clever really <laughs> that uh, the example code they put in their docs is dynamic. So the key here is the key that if you copied it from the example, that's what that key is. Uh, that's very clever. Okay, uh, on Stripe, amounts are always in cents. So this amount is not $2,000, it's 20. For stock? Well, whatever we're about selling. Uh, why, why is the amount in cents? So you don't have to deal with floating points. So you don't have to deal with floating point numbers. Exact arithmetic, right? And that's important when you're doing payments because you don't want to do rounding off. What about fractional sales? Uh, yeah, yeah, in this case we don't have fractional cents because you can't get half a cent. Um, so. Can you please repeat what the data amount was said? $20. Pennies. Oh, okay, got it. Okay. So we don't have to do with fractional. Right, right, right. Okay. Stripe only deals with pennies, which makes payment from them a little cumbersome, but... Yeah, you just have to remember that. It looks a little weird. They're like, wait, 2000 Oh, 220 20. Every okay. month you get a big armored car pulls out, heavy bags of pennies. <laughs> yeah, that would be terrible. Um, <laughs> They're all your pennies from your transactions. I don't, I don't think they would waste that and put it in a giant armored car. I think they would just bring it to you in like a normal car. Have you ever tried to go to the bank and like right. order the pennies? They won't do it. Uh, like, can I have a what, $50 in pennies? <laughs> I had a coin jar once and took it to the bank, and I'm like, can I deposit this? And they're like, they, you know, they were like, really, are you kidding me? And I'm like, yeah, I'm just saying I want it. Your business is money. Whatever. Take it. But what it is is they have to have a coin county machine, and yeah. they didn't have one at that branch, right? Yeah. It is hilarious. hilarious. They're like, just go to the one down the street. Or, or, or. All right. Um, that's that's completely off topic. Uh, so let's just see what it renders. <laughs> okay, let's see what we get here. So, uh, let's go to our Stripe example and go out and search. Now if I go to slash, it should go to this. Oh wait, I made the template, but I didn't have it up. Should talk about this. So. If you don't remember how to do this, you could copy and paste it from previous examples, but uh, we do equals and then template dot must and then template dot parse glob and hand it template slash star dot go HTML. Okay. And that will give us our template. Equals. Oh. Equals, yep. Because this is a global variable or a packed global variable. Oh, you already right. Um so we want to pack parse that template using this. Okay. Everybody remember that? And then we'll just execute. Name is what's the name? Index.goh. Yep. Is that the right template library you're importing? Probably not. I really should get rid of that library. <laughs> <laughs> Where did that go? No, I, it keeps happening to me. It's because it, whatever it is, it has the same definition. It, is it in your source? Yeah, yeah. I have like a million packages in there, and it just pulled out. It, it is amazing to me that Go imports is able to work so quickly. I have no yeah. idea what it's doing. I, I think it should sort of default to standard library. You know. <laughs> but it's, it's kind of incredible that I have like, you know, 10,000 packages sitting in there and every single time I save it's like, oh yeah, fix the imports, fix the imports, fix And it must be scanning the whole code or something. I don't know how it's doing it. But Go routine? Yeah, yes. <laughs> um, okay. So now if I go to local host AD, whoops. Now we have a button. You click that button. It does that. So this is the easiest way to use Stripe. Is they have this nice library which just does this all for you. Okay, and this is the embedded form. Wow. And maybe this would be good enough, right? It's a demo site. They didn't give it HTTPS there. Where did the image come from? Yeah. It's really 
Well, so how do you change the image? Right there, the dash image. What, what, yeah, let's do that. What, what, what should the image be? Minions with their pants on. OK, we have that. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. We have that. <laughs> So let's serve that as minions JPEG. Okay, now I'm not I'm not done, so I'm saying use this image, but now I have to actually use it, right? I have to like let people get to it. So how do I do that? for slash, so for example, one easy way to do that would be to do um, then you could do serve file. <coughs> right, so we could do that. Um, first if I serve. This is a little clumsy because we have to do it for every file. But normally, you create a file server and do it that way. Okay. But this is okay for now. Um, so, yeah, handle index. If the path is this thing, then we serve the file. Otherwise, we go and serve the index. So maybe this will show us our. I don't know if this is going to work. Yeah. Oh, gosh, it worked. Oh, my <laughs> <God>. <laughs> and they put some weird effect on it so it like, has a circle around it. That's kind of cool. Uh, <laughs> it was pretty easy. Uh, okay, so we should probably change the other text in here. Demo site to guarantee. That's a hard word to spell. Uh, investments. And then what's the what are we buying here? High returns. High returns. <laughs> Let's change the amount. It's not $20. Uh, it's way more than that. It's a Berkshire Hathaway. Yeah, $200,000, right? Two. <laughs> there we go. A lot of zeros. OK, let's see what we get there. $200,000. That's what we got to buy our way in. So let's let's see what happens if we try this. Test example. You should run this like com. actually and see if anybody buys it. What's the credit card? 42, 42, 42, 42, 42, 42, 42, 42. Uh, it knows it's Visa. It's not the Is it that the first four numbers? It's the first digit. Yeah. Five is American Express, four is Visa, three is MasterCard, oh, no, three is American Express, five is MasterCard. So let's say this ends. Sixteen. This is some number. Normally, it'd be on the back of your credit card. We're just going to put a number there. Okay. And then you can check that to remember. But then they're going to have this verification step. So let's just. Yeah. So that's really slick uh, UI there, isn't it? Yeah. Man, your customers will appreciate this. It's a lot better than PayPal. <laughs> uh, okay. So we're going to pay the two hundred thousand dollars. Everything's great. <laughs> Okay, and then over here,
Might be slow to approve charge, I think. Mm. We can have transfers. So it says the data key should be test published. Well, we did that. Uh, you can change, you can do a custom button. So the issue is that if we look in our, you see this? Mm -hmm. So what it did is it posted to our page. So the process is we have our form entered it. There does some stuff with Stripe, and that's what's doing the verification and stuff. But then when, when you put send it, it actually posts to your page. Mm. And it will post with a token. Okay. And the token they call here is called Stripe token. So it's like they put inside the form, actually maybe we can see it, a uh, hidden input. Um, oh, actually we can see it right here. Um, I don't want to enter all this again. They will have put inside this form, when you submit inside this form, a hidden input with that name, Stripe token, and it would have all the data. So the way they're doing this is with an I turn. And okay, it looks good. Yeah. On the topic of tokens, when you spoke, when we went to that screen where the user has their token, we on the back side have our token, it's in the inspection page there that they will see the token, their token, if they want to look for it, not the No, 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 they don't see the token. That's, that's not important to them. Their token. Well, it's not important to them, but you say that they can see it. Yeah. See, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm curious as oh. to where they would no, see no, it. Because it's, that's the key. It's, it's a, there's a public token and a private token. The public one is what you're sending. They don't have this normally here, but it's separate from the private one, so someone's trying to hack your account. No, I understand that. But I'm just curious, where in this process would the customer, if he was one of us geeky, techy guys, want to find it? It's right there. It would be yeah. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Okay. Right. But that's, that's okay. That's the publishable key. That's right, sure. what you're allowed to show. I get it. I understand that concept totally. I was just curious where. Yeah, so we click pay with card, enter information. When we click post, what this did is it added to this other, to this form here it added an input called Stripe token, right. and then submitted the form. And so we need to, on our handle index, add code to handle when that happens. Okay, so that's the method post here. So just to show this different, let's add, make this action different, right? And we'll just call it slash payment. Uh, and it'll, what this will happen is this form will post to slash payment uh, with, the in, with the token. So, yeah. Since this is calling uh, external script, your script could be, it doesn't have to be in that form, that could be down right above the closing body, right? That entire so script, script. I suspect that they use this script being embedded in this form to know which form to hook up to. Okay. So it is probably important. So it's script. just the main part. Though this is very unusual, not a way we normally write code. It's clever, but it, it does seem to work. So, so in other words, instead of like having to have an ID on my form and say, use this form, yeah. Just throw it in the form, and it knows where to put form to. Put the button in. It's kind of cool. So it'll put the button right here, where the script tag is right now. That's where it's going to put the button. Because I notice I don't have a button in here. It made the button for me. Um, that's the pay with card button. It did that for me. And you can customize that with some of these attributes. But, um, and we did we change the amount. We changed the name. Uh, okay, so let's add to here slash payment handle payment. Okay, so that'll that'll be where we handle our payment. Just because this guy's starting to do everything, it's nice to break it up a little. Uh, so we'll copy index and paste in and change index to payment. So now, <clears throat> this happens if you go to slash payment and you post it to slash payment. So 
Uh, let's say that if rec.method is not post, so if you do a get, we will respond with uh, method not allowed. So which is just a special HTTP error code. So if you if you haven't posted a form for some reason using the English slash payment, that's what we'll send back. Okay. We could also redirect it or something, but this this will work. Um, okay. But if you have posted, then we should expect a stripe token. So stripe token rec dot how do we get something out of a form? form value. And the name is from here, stripe token. That's what they're telling you. A hidden input called stripe token will be appended to the form. So that's their hidden input. That's how we get the value of that hidden input. So when the form is submitted, it'll send in this data. So let's see if that works um, by just printing it, okay? So we're just gonna send back the Sprite token, the page, just to see if it's all hooked up right. So I go to um, here, refresh, close this down. I don't know how to do this with testing. <laughs> what if you do, isn't 555 always invalid? Yeah. That's cool. I like their. There, there's a token. So this is the token we're going to use to interact with the Stripe API from our go code. So the process so far, we added a form, and that's a Stripe generated form. Okay, so we just did what their doc said. Then when we submit the form, it posts data to our server. Okay, so it posts a Stripe token. And then from our server is where we do the actual charge. Okay. And that's what they're doing here, sending tokens to your server. So next up, charge your customer. Okay, making your first charge. You've gotten the token from the user's credit card details. Now what? Now you charge the money. This happens on your server, and the fastest way to do this is with client libraries. So they're showing the example in Ruby here, but we got the Go library, so we should be able to do this in Go. Mm -hmm. uh, and it'll look very specific. This is where loops come in really handy, too. Loops? Charge, 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 charge. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, just so you know, one annoying thing about credit cards is chargebacks. And so uh, if your customer doesn't think that they actually should have paid you money, they can dispute the claim. And the credit card company will immediately uh, charge you as the, as the person selling the item um, a chargeback. So you'll lose the money. So uh, when somebody gives you money with a credit card, that's not guaranteed to be there. Uh, they can always dispute the claim later and take it back. And then you have to get into this process of conflict resolution that the credit card company will go through. But yeah, you need at least a couple of full-time employees to deal with all <laughs> the things on your side. Here's a question over related to this. What happens if the person double clicks on the button and misses? What prevents him from double charging himself? They, they have some things in there to prevent that. You saw, like, when I didn't have .com on the end and stuff. They have a bunch of protections like that and make that unlikely to occur. Uh, there's also steps in, involved in here. Uh, so when you write your code and stuff, we'll see that in a second. Okay. Uh, they have an item potency key, which is just like, you can tell that some math person wrote this API, right? Does, does anybody know what item potency means? What, what's the word? If, if you do it, do it twice, you get the same result. So if you charge it, I didn't know. If you charge it once, that's right. So this means that something. That means you need Viagra. <laughs> that's exactly what I was where I. I'm done with it. 
No, it means if you do it again, it doesn't change the result, right? And so it means it does something the first time, but every subsequent time, it doesn't do it. Um, so it's safe to repeat the, the action. Uh, and so they have an item currency key, which you add to the thing, which means if you, um, so say you're doing a charge and the network drops, and then you come back and like do the charge again by using this key, it'll only do it once, okay? It'll be like, did we do it? Did it actually succeed last time? Okay, forget it. Uh, if it didn't succeed, then we'll actually do it. And so it's like a safeguard. So there's some other things like that. Uh, and then the end uh, is that if you screw up and you overcharge customers, this is, like Todd was saying, you have people on your staff who fix these problems, okay? Uh, that's unavoidable. At some point, you're gonna have to deal with problems like that. Um, and most companies in this position of, of being a web startup uh, are very forgiving. Customer's always right. Uh, you'll do anything to salvage a relationship. And so often you'll be like, yeah, yeah, I have three, three months, you know, whatever. Um, that's just the game you play. Um, particularly because you have venture capital money, and so you're not actually, you don't care about actually making money that much. Um, later down the line, you expect to be profitable. And right now, what you're trying to do is get user to work. Anyway. It's, it's the same reason why yeah. 14 people you met let log in. <laughs> but not 15 percent want customers. 60 60 percent of Netflix customers share the platform. See, there you go. And they could crack down on that, but maybe it's not worth it to them. You know. Right. Growth. Okay. So we have. A, they're giving an example here. You know, we could look at the other languages, but let's just look at the API docs for Go. Um, but the basic process is going to be we need this key. So that's the first step. This is this is probably my secret key. Like I said, these docs are clever. Yeah. These aren't just the docs you see. You see yeah, docs that have a slightly different number in there. Um, docs itself, if they're making videos. Yeah, don't use a real Stripe account, which I'm not, so I'm okay. Well, secret key test. Um, <laughs> that's true. This is the test. This is the test uh, account. When I showed you the full one, there were two sets of keys. There was this test one and the live one. And so, I did leak that information when I showed it. I showed you guys the live one. But the docs only show the test ones. So they could make charges to the, the test dashboard, but that's not real charges, okay? That'll make you test rich. <laughs> yeah, you'll have, it's monopoly money, okay. <laughs> uh, so let's, uh, let's save that. Can I do a push real quick at this point, just so I'm yeah. behind on the typing? Sure, okay. 